On this episode, we talk about Instagram and museums, auditing yourself and finding out you're a two or a three, and I ask myself a question. Chuck, and this is episode 107 of the Ask Gary V Show. Hope everyone's super well, feeling a really strong groove today. Very intense business day, tight, strong, epic meetings, feeling like I'm moving the Vayner Media machine 500 Vayner Media employees deep in the right direction. Uh, Vayner RSC, the fund, having some good meetings, feeling really, feeling really businessman like today, uh, which should. Pretty much make for a very good show. Hope everyone in the Vayner Nation is doing super well. Big ups to all of you. Appreciate all of you. Uh, and uh, India, let's get into the show. <laughs> Colton asks, Gary V is all about being one step ahead of the game. What are your social media plans for 2016? Colton, my plans for 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 2, 3, 4, 35, 6, 37, 38, 39, 40, and beyond. I went further than you guys thought. Yeah. <laughs> my plans for all those years are the same thing, which is my friend and everybody in Vayner Nation, I don't know what my 2016 social media or business or, or brand building plans are because I, for the billionth time on this show, Colton, am a counter puncher. I react to the opportunities in front of me at that moment. January 2016, six months from today, is an eternity in the game. Microsoft is buying up stuff. Uh, Snapchat is growing by the second. Instagram's ad product could be incredible if it gets deeper and more detailed like it's Facebook father company. Uh, Facebook continues to be much stronger than people think. Uh, Twitter's video product evolves. Uh, you know, influencers, especially long tail, call it 1,000 to 100,000 people following them, uh, continues to be an interesting arbitrage. Where's the white space? Where do all of you, all of you, think that you should be doing this and where should it be Y, right? This is X and I'm always in Y. So my 2016 plans are to play more Y, right? You know, play in the white space, find the arbitrage, market where people actually are. I didn't know podcasts would become interesting again. You know, I didn't know that, you know, Snapchat, well I did, but like maybe three years ago I didn't know that Snapchat would get older. You know, uh, you know I didn't know that Periscope and Meerkat would be invented. I mean, they didn't exist six months ago. I mean, Periscope did. It was bought by Twitter but then brought internally. Like, these things didn't, in theory, exist six months ago. These are things we talk about. There are people in the Vayner Nation that have used them to, to grow their audience. Like, like, I don't think people understand. Um, as a matter of fact, you know what? Real time, right now, because I'm continuing to test, we're going a little bit different direction, Stefan. I'm going to bring up Periscope. Let's, we're going to Periscope right now instead of Meerkat. Uh, let's just see. Let's just, let, let's just see, right? Like, you know, uh, ask, here we go, ask, yeah, this is real time shit. Ask Gary, you know, me. Um, st- or, this is only, no, I don't want to do that. This is, no, on, good, ask Gary V, behind. Hey everyone, good to see ya. <laughs> thanks, thanks for tuning in. There we go, like, you know, like, I don't know if I can actually stop the broadcast for a second. Because I haven't, I haven't. Nate just did? Yeah, you went. Nate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that. Okay, that is on. Okay, good. So, ask Gary B behind. Let's see. There's a whole lot of gray. Sorry, guys. I hope you, you enjoyed yourself for a quick second. Boom. This is D. Rockefeller. There we go. <laughs> You haven't he- heard me no. say that before? That's what I always say all the time. D. Rock. A fella. What's that? Yeah. You like that, right? All right, there's India, got a lot of hearts. Yes, here we go, all right, there we go. So my friend, to wrap up this long ass question, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna react. Just like right now, I had a feeling that I wanted a periscope. 
And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna react to the opportunities in front of me and that's why I don't plan too far ahead. You know what, I'm, what my plan is? My plan is to play in the white space, the underpriced arbitrage of the consumer's attention and the places where I think uniquely you can story tell that brings value to those people for the moments in time where they matter. Ecom, search, banner, YouTube, Twitter, you know, the narrative of my entire life. Reg asks, what the hell are people thinking when they write essays in their Instagram captions? We're here to look at pictures, not read endless shit. Reg, don't say we, say I. You are here to just see pictures. Plenty of people like Humans of New York, like all these things. People like the long form written context around a photo. Reg, you can continue to just go through the photos and you should and do you and I appreciate that and 90% of the people are down for that as well but I see an emerging opportunity for people to write long form copy on top of photos on Instagram. India, do you, do you ever find yourself reading something that's more than a sentence? Let's get over, D-Rock, you're not showing India's, not giving, do, you, do you find yourself reading more, do you, have you ever read two sentences on Instagram? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about three, give me three. Like five, six. Yeah. yeah. Seven? Yeah, some accounts, you know, that's what they do great. They're great storytelling and they tell the story in the caption. And do you like it? Oh. Yeah, I really like it. See, Reg, there's no we, there's you. You don't want to read, but in the, and platforms evolve. Like, that's just the way it is, right? And so uh, the answer to your question is, uh, you know, people are going to do their thing and you should say I next time instead of we. <laughs> <laughs> It's just the truth. Cold. What's going on? What's going on on, on the scope? Hey guys, ask Gary V. As a matter of fact, this will be interesting. Let's get a little survey, Stefan. You'll tell me after the next question. How many of you on the scope right now are watching the Ask Gary V. Show? That means you're watching at least two out of every three episodes. That would be considered watching. Give me a yes, no in the comments there. All right, India, you getting some answers there? Yeah. What? Yeah. Right. Stefan, make sure you capture all the news. <laughs> Colleen asks, what happens to museums when their main point of contact with their audience is online platforms? Is Instagram the museum of tomorrow? Colleen, it's not that Instagram's the museum of tomorrow or any photo app that is around. I mean, obviously Facebook and Twitter, but obviously Instagram's winning in the current state. In the future, there may be others. I don't think they replace it, but because at some level, going and touching it and feeling it is still a value prop that a museum delivers, right? I mean, photos of these paintings have been around forever. There was a point in time where Life Magazine, if it covered a museum, would be that same replication because everybody left, read Life Magazine in the entire country back in the heydays of print in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Um, and so, I don't think they replace them. Um, not at all, as a matter of fact. I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, I think they enhance them. I would argue that there are more people on the bubble of going to a museum that are now going to museums because they see a great photo on the gram and it con- creates a consideration point. So I actually think museums need to go on the offense some places like Instagram and use them as gateway drugs to get visitors to come to the museum. And I highly recommend those museums show a little personality besides just a photo of the the damn thing because we've seen the damn thing, right? Show a little bit of the personality of the people that are working there or the little unique things that make that place special or like, I don't know, like the gold faucets in the bathroom. Like give me some goddamn reason besides the artifact museum. Hey Gary, um, so I audited myself and I'm taking in serious consideration that I just might be a two or a three. Um, my question is, man, is if I am, do I need to go get my college degree? Like what what do I, like how do I put myself in those in that position because I really don't know how to, you know, I only know how to make doors. I don't know how to walk through them, if you know what I mean. And you know, I'm all EQ and no IQ. So if I have to go get my degree, that's going to suck. Charlie, great question. I'm super into this. Uh, I, I think, you know, if you've audited yourself and you feel like, you know, you need to have, you need to attach yourself to a leader, a CEO, a number one, a founder, and you could be a supporting cast member, uh, because I guess making doors, not walking through them, maybe you, <laughs> I don't know, but you know, maybe, Maybe you understand the ta- tangible execution, not the architecture. Maybe you're the greatest mason in the world and you need just a really solid architect to be, be successful. I would say it has nothing to do with getting a diploma. 
It has everything to do with, if you've been auditing yourself and you started with, I've audited myself, which I appreciate, and you know, for anybody who's watching this who doesn't understand auditing themselves and I'm a number two or three, these are themes that I've been talking about in the first 105, 106 episodes of this show, which is if you know yourself, you have self-awareness, you have a real chance to succeed. I would tell you, Charlie, that you don't need to get a degree unless you want to go latch up to a number one that values that degree and the truth is you've already lost that game because if that number one values it, they're going to want to go with somebody who's got a degree from clearly in my opinion based on the vibe of the video comes from a better school than you would go to. Take it from me. I mean Mount Ida College isn't like rolling up any like unbelievable uh, excitement for anybody who's an educator. Uh, and so, And so I would tell you your journey uh, your focus should be finding a number one who shares your DNA and philosophy. You, you guys could be similar and she could just be an architect and an incredibly strong leader where you could be that support system. So find her, find him, find the number one that is the match to you, not find the number one that you clearly think society has created. To me, to me, more number ones actually look like you on paper, so I actually think you'll be able to find that. I think number twos, when they're not the straight man or the straight woman, when they're still also a little bit of magic, a little EQ over IQ, make great number twos. I, I think one and two in that play is great. I think three, four, five, six, somewhere along the line, you need that straight, you know, really straight person. Um, and so uh, you, your job is to really go out and find uh, that person, find that number one that matches your skill set, that matches your philosophy that you can really jam with. Find your number one. You like that? Uh, I've got a spin. I've got a spin for episode 107 uh, and here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna ask myself a question. Hey Gary, great show, totally obsessed. My favorite thing now, ahead of Game of Thrones. Uh, Anyway, uh, uh, here's a question for you. If, if you had a business or a blog or a personal brand or a book, how would you get more people to, uh, to you know, know about you and to, to buy that? To like, how would you get results? I guess at the end of the day, Gary, I'm asking you, how would you get results? Thanks, love the show. Gary, great question. <laughs> Looking great, by the way. Uh, you know, One of the things I haven't talked about in the show a lot, I've talked about it a little bit and I saw people get value from it in that local small business biz dev thing is the gross underestimation of distribution in a JV joint venture environment. There are so many of you on this show with businesses that have locked so heavily into social media because that's how you view me as the way to get distribution. You've left some of the greatest opportunities on the table, including if you are not hitting up the top 100 blogs in your space, if you're selling cupcakes and you literally aren't spending the time to figure out what the top 100 cupcake content sites are on the internet and then sending an email and saying, hey, I'm India from India's Cupcake Shop. I love reading your site, Cupcake Daily. Oh, this is me typing the email. I love reading your site, Cupcake Daily. I'm very passionate. Here's my site. Here's my Instagram. I would love to write for you once a week on new sprinkles concepts or on decorations that matter. Like, I will give you my labor for free, and what you'll give me is distribution and awareness. If you don't realize that. You know, it's like Kendrick Lamar. Did anybody pay attention to what Kendrick Lamar did? If you don't know who Kendrick Lamar is, he's a rapper, uh, an artist, and he went on to a lot of other albums as he was starting to get a little fame. He leveraged that to get on and he came in trying to kill it. On Like he basically went on everybody's track and he tried to be so much better than the person whose song it was that everybody was listening and be like, oh shit, that guy's dope. Like I'm gonna check him out. That's what India, the cupcake lady, wants to do on Cupcake Daily. Oh crap, that was such a good thought, let me follow that. And so, in the earliest, earliest, earliest days of me building my brand, I went on wine blogs and wrote blog posts to contribute and because I had the chops, you know, Kendrick spits incredible lyrics, India writes about incredible toppings and I talked about incredible things about wine that people hadn't thought about. That gave me the ammo for my work to have a positive ROI. The truth is, a lot of you don't want to put in the work because the output of your content in video form, in audio form, in written form, isn't good enough. You just aren't good enough. What you're selling, they're not buying. 
And the quickest way to find out is to actually go on a road show, put in the 40 hours a day to get yourself into places where you, why can't you email all 500 people on YouTube that have some level of audience and ask them to be interviewed on our show or to be part of it? I mean, why can't you? Why can't you ask? Why can't you ask? Why can't you ask? That, my friend Gary, is what you need to do. If you've got something to sell, you need to go and knock on doors, right? You know, you you gotta know how to build them and walk through them. You gotta knock on doors and you gotta ask, like, can I guest contribute to your world? Can I write a blog post? Can I, can I just show up and like, how do I bring value to what you need? Because all these people that have homes, that have audiences, they need more content to feed them. Content costs money. So people coming in and contributing, it's the ultimate kind of leverage deal. You come and you write for me for free because I need it because I need to keep feeding the kids I have in the room and you need kids for what you're gonna do. And that is something that 99.99999999999 of you are absolutely not doing enough of. Putting in the work to get in front of audiences to be discovered. Putting out a picture on Instagram and holding your breath and hoping somebody's gonna see it because you used a hashtag isn't enough. Go out and take it, and that, my friend Gary, is what you should do if you want something to happen. Two minutes. What do you think about that? Gary got you riled up. I got my, <laughs> Gary's question got me riled up. Question of the day. What is your parents' name? You keep asking questions. I'll keep answering. Yes, just a parent's name. <laughs> Rick and Susan. <laughs> really? Are we breaking Periscope? I don't even know. I don't even know that Oh, Charlie. Here we go. Hey, Gary. Um, so I audited my son's Instagram and I noticed that he's got this is unbelievable. consideration that I just might be a two word group. Um, Good job, Stefan. man is if I am, do I need to go get my college degree? Like, what? How do I put myself in those in that position? Because I really don't know how to, you know, I only know how to make doors. I don't know how to walk through them. <laughs> I really and, don't. You know, I'm all make doors, no not walk through them. So if I have to go get my degree, that's gonna suck. Play it again, because I love it so much. <laughs> I weirdly, like I think I need to make. Area. Just do it again. I think I need to. Um, I think we need so to I make. Make sure everybody on Periscope sees this. I want to make this video go viral. <laughs> I love this question. This is a great question, by the way. How do I put myself in those in that position? Because I really don't know how to, you know, I only know how to make doors. I don't know how to walk through them. If you know what I mean. And I think I actually get it out. You and no IQ. So if I me too, brother. Degree, that's gonna suck. Yeah, that sucks. I hate school too. Charlie, right? Charlie. Charlie E. Um, a tour of the facility. Gary, what's up? Hi, Gary. You said, you said on new platforms that people go to and and see that, hey, what's up, 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 what's Everybody, it's good to see you. Um, spaz. I don't think I'm spazzing. I think I'm in Mexico, big ups, holla, Jersey in the house. I like that. Uh, Stefan, do me a favor. Um, go give them a tour. 16, 15, and 12 and bring it back. <laughs> All right? All right, good. let me just say something real quick. Hey, guys. Uh, so I'm going to go back to work. Stefan here is going to give you a tour of 16, 15, and 12 at VaynerMedia. I hope you enjoy it. hope you enjoyed the show. hope your life is phenomenal. hope I get to see you one day. See ya. Alright. <laughs> Give him a tour.